All right, so we've spent a little bit of time talking, uh, going through some demos, talking about web servers, but uh, now we'll get into what you need to, to actually know for the exam. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about the web server market shares. What's the number one used open source? Apache or any derivative member, Tomcat, Jakarta, uh, any of the projects underneath that that have that, that Apache base though. A lot of times now we see people downloading the, the WAMP or the LAMP servers. So the Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP or the Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Uh, in the corporate world though, the biggest share of the marketplace is with IIS. And that's because, like we were talking about earlier, typically it comes well supported. As long as you got some coin to throw at it, you can definitely get it uh, supported. Uh, we've seen a lot of different things where uh, you know websites have been defaced. Uh, I remember there was one time um, over 10 years ago where uh, there was a, uh, a nonprofit organization I belonged to where. Uh, the Captain Morgan's guy ended up on the main page of that website getting defaced because uh, that web server was compromised. Uh, and think about this, uh, what is the impact of a web server being attacked and brought down? If you're able to bring down my web server in the CIA triad, what's affected out of that CIA triad? Integrity, because we don't know the data, accessibility, availability. Availability, what about the confidentiality? Probably, right? So immediately you're going to lose trust. Think about some of the, the recent events with, uh, you know, whatever getting hacked. We could plug in whatever for whatever day we have. Uh, but, I mean, really, you lose confidence in that. Uh, we've talked a little bit about some of these already. We'll go in the rest of them um, later on today. But um, some different types of attacks here. Number one thing, number one thing is you get old wet behind the ears Johnny to come in and configure the web server. After a few days, he gets it up and running, or she gets it up and running, and then the project's over. It's launched, it's ready to go, it's put into production, and now the attackers are just salivating because there's going to be a lot of holes that are available. And that's typically why in a uh, you know, software engineering approach to this, you integrate security into whatever quote that you give a customer. That way, you can stand up maybe a test environment prior to getting it go live in production. Uh, you will see directory traversal attacks on your exam. And kind of like in the Windows and Linux environments that uh, we've been playing around with, if you do the um, at the URL level, and we'll play around with one of these here in a few minutes. If you do the um, the dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash dot dot, you'll actually see that you're able to get back to the root level level web server, which is pretty cool uh, for directory traversal. And you will see at least one question, probably two or three, on your exam that show you dot 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 dot, and somebody was trying to get into your web server. And that's the log that was returned for that. Uh, so keep that in mind. We went through and uh, showed you how to do a, uh, a footprint on a web server using some pretty cool things. We did uh, mirroring for web servers and, and we're able to do HTT track um, yesterday and went through and did that. We'll get into doing some vulnerability scanning as well as uh, see if we can get some passwords here momentarily. But usually the number one thing that's done right out the get-go in our footprinting and reconnaissance phase is this uh, thing called information gathering. And we talked a lot about that first couple of days um, doing our recon. Two password cracking tools that are uh, tried and true. Uh, one is Brutus and one is THC Hydra. Those are the two ones that people will usually use um, Brutus, what do you think that does? It uses a brute force attack. Um, a lot of websites, after three attempts, it, it implements the clipping level and will lock that user out. Kind of like what you were asking me earlier about, hey, how many 
how many licks does it take to get to the center of the Tootsie Roll Pop? Well, the same thing with passwords is, hey, usually it's three and you're out, just like in baseball. So what are some of the countermeasures that we can put in place? You can put in that clipping level, um, the threshold that needs to be met in order to, to have that web password protected or your web ser server protected. Uh, but one of the most important things, and oftentimes it's, it's um, kind of laughed at in the industry, is Patch Tuesday. You know, Microsoft Patch Tuesday, where just about every Tuesday, we talked about those zero days and 72 days post facto that those are found. Typically, that kind of manifests itself in that 72 day Tuesday as the new release comes out with the MS. 063749 or whatever the associative zero day or vulnerability of is found, they write a patch, they throw out the update, and then you download the update. And it gets to be kind of annoying after a while, and I think they do that on purpose, is because they want you to try Microsoft wants you to try to keep your system uh, protected. Another tool we're going to play with here is uh, one you may have seen before, um, this thing down here at the bottom, the Microsoft Baseline Security Analyzer. Um, that's actually implemented inside of the MAP tool, the Microsoft Assessment Planning Toolkit. Microsoft created this thing, uh, the, the MAP tool, to tell you whether or not you should upgrade, how convenient for them. They created to spend tons of money to create this tool telling you whether or not you should upgrade to a new environment, whether it's hardware, software, or virtual machines. Uh, and it runs via SNMP on your network. And it'll run in Linux. It'll run on Windows. Um, I'm not sure if they have one for uh, Unix specifically or Spark uh, platforms, but I know it runs in uh, Windows and Linux because we've we used it. Um, in one of the jobs over on post that I was able to help out with. So uh, that's it for the hack.